Hey guys and gals, Homestead Prepper. Um, I've got a 2016 Dixie Chopper right here and it won't start. And I'm going to show you the procedure I use to get it started and show you what the problem is. Okay, the, the first thing you need to check is the battery. You need to make sure you have you know more than 12 volts. This is my um, meter and I've got it set for DC. So what I, first thing I did is I checked the, uh, the voltage. You just put one on the negative and one on the positive. I know this is pretty basic and you need to see what the voltage is. And the voltage is showing we got 12.7 volts. So okay, we're good there. The next thing you need to check out is there's some fuses over here. Now there's, there's two fuses. Okay, I'm just going to take one off. So dark over here. I've already got this one undone. It just it just snaps off, and we'll pull this fuse out right here. And show you how you check that. Okay, now you've got to set the meter to ohms, which we've got to set, and we're just going to put. Um, it doesn't matter which one goes to which. You put that right there, and you can see that um, this is good. So, and there's another one there. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can figure out if you've seen this one. You can figure out how to take that other one off, and this just uh, clips back on here, like that. Okay, now here's where we get to the nitty gritty. Come around over here. This is a schematic I pulled off of the internet. It's for a 2016 Dixie Chopper, like I have. And we've checked the battery, we've checked the fuses, and the next logical place to check would be the key switch. Okay? So you can look here, when you turn the key on, you've got a blue wire that goes down, goes over here, and it goes to the PTO switch. And it goes from blue, it goes across there, and it goes to this light blue thing. And it goes down here to this safety control monitor, and it gives a, um, a signal to that to get it going. So, what does it say? Engine interlock or whatever it is. Start signal. That's what it is. Um, also, being that I don't have to uh, sit in the seat here, you can see the seat here. I've got it folded up, um, up, and it will not start unless someone's sitting in it. Well, it's going to be kind of hard for me to sit in it, so this just plugs in under here. There's a little thing, and what I've done is I've jumpered it. Now, I don't recommend you, you know, leave it like that because that's a safety feature. You don't want to run over and kill your kids or mow them down or something, but for, for the time being, for troubleshooting purposes, I just took a piece of wire, skinned it, and shoved it in, and that jumps the switch out, so I don't have to sit in it. And then... If you look on the print, you can see, like I said, you've got that, that dark blue and you've got the light blue. So I've already determined that we got 12 volts coming out of the, uh, the key switch. So it comes down to here. We should have 12 volts there at the dark blue. Oh, the lighting in there is terrible. And let me just show you. That was the jumper that I used. We've got to have this set back on um, voltage. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this underneath right there. And that kind of holds that negative in there. And that way I can just use this one right here to see. So there's our dark blue. We're going to put that in there like that. And we're going to turn the switch. Oh, and I've got it set to ohms. I need to set it to volts. Okay, it's upside down. But right there, we've got uh, we've got volts. We turn that switch, and we've got voltage. So that tells me that the start switch is working, and we very may very well have 12 volts going through this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this back on here, like this. And I don't know if you can see in there or not. Like I said, it's very tight. But 
that light blue wire is right there and what we're going to do is we're going to turn now if you have the PTO switch on it, it's not going to start okay so it's off and what we're going to do is I'm going to turn this and then we're going to look at the voltmeter I'll turn the voltmeter around okay so we're turning it and we're not we're not we're not getting anything when I hit the switch so right there that tells me that this is bad so what we've well, what I've already done I'm going to pull this off and you can see the, the blue and the light blue wire is there in the center it wants to be uncooperative every time we get on camera here okay that's just barely on there okay I bet she'll start now well, she would start if I hit the choke. But anyway, that is the procedure that I used to uh, figure out what was wrong. So I need to go up to Dixie Chopper and get another one. Now the PTO does engage, does work, but um, I couldn't get the darn thing to start. I was down the street mowing uh, someone else's property and my mower quit on me. I had to take the tractor and carry it over here <laughs> last night. So anyway guys, like I said, it's all right there so I hope that was uh, helpful to somebody but it can be just something just as simple as that PTO switch right there that's bad so okay okay guys I, I don't know how clear that was out there I figured I'd show you on paper but um, you uh, have to have your voltmeter and right there I've got the negative on the negative side of the battery here I'm going to show you on paper and then you of course want to go from negative to positive and see if you've got 12 volts and then you have these fuses and you want to go from there to there of course you have to remove it now you can either check for you know 12 volts going in and out I don't know which one is you know you can you can check that way you can just pull the fuse out and you know see if uh, you have continuity of course we'd have to be back over there on ohms for that and then of course you do the same thing to that fuse now one goes to the um, voltage regulator now which one it is it's not labeled so just check them both and then there's your key switch so you want to put this back on the battery on the negative and then you want to hit the switch and see if you've got power right there you can see that sends that out and that goes to the PTO switch which I just happened to have it removed which was the center one here and that is I guess the six right there so that would be six even though it's labeled B on the thing and you would see and we did have power to here the problem was is when I went to this light blue we didn't have any power and this is a normally closed switch and I'm going to show you a little bit more here just to confirm what we found out talk I had the camera in my mouth but basically if this switch were working this should this should we should have got a beeping sound from here to that one and that confirms why we don't have this light blue signal coming down over here to the um, start signal so, okay guys, so what I need to do is get a new one of these and then my mower is going to be back in business. But just a, something simple like this little switch here has gone bad. Now, it does work. When you do that, it does engage the PTO. So that part of it works, but that doesn't do me a whole lot of good if I can't get it started. Okay, um, if you have any questions, Homestead Prepper out.